I was taking medicine, my brain was foggy. I knew only one thing, and that was that I need to hire Carrie Dills, but Carrie had made it apparent to everyone she would never work for the man. And by the man, it was like anybody but herself. And I was like, I gotta do this. So I sent her an email, and I don't remember what I wrote, and I remember all the different emails that went back and forth, but for four days, I was in a delirium while I was recruiting Carrie to come join me at Crowd Favorite. Neither of us are there right at this moment, but we were there working together um, last year. And all I remember was, as I'm writing this, I kept thinking, I have no idea if this is gonna work, but if it works, it will be my greatest achievement in life. And it worked, and then I realized I had a new greatest achievement, and that was to get her to come speak at WordCamp San Diego, and we have that now. So please welcome Carrie Dills. Thank you, Chris. <sighs> All right, so how many of you guys uh, use your website to sell services? How about products? How many of you want to use your website to sell products or services? Okay, excellent, you're in the right room then. Um, so, so here's the deal, writing, uh, writing is a great way to actually generate that business to come through your website. Um, and I'm gonna share some tips with you on, on how you can do that. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about the why. Uh, why, why writing? Why not Google ads or, or anything else for that matter? Why not, uh, well, I don't know what the other why not was, but anyways. Uh, so when you're, when you're writing, you're actually doing three things, you're building uh, three things. Um, the first is your name recognition. Uh, the more you're writing, the more Google is indexing what you write, uh, the more you're sharing these things on social media, the more people are seeing your name. Uh, I do a lot of work uh, in the Genesis framework, and a few years ago that was a relatively small community. It was kind of like a little, little town. Everybody knew everybody. Uh, and there was this guy named uh, Shrita. Never heard of him, uh, but one day somebody shared one of his blog posts on social media. Went, read it, great. Immediately forgot his name. Uh, a couple weeks later, I was uh, in a studio press forum answering a question, and, and there I see that uh, Shrita's beat me to it and already got the answer in there. And I'm like, oh, Shrita, okay. And it didn't take long before I just started seeing his name everywhere. And at this point, if you do any work with Genesis, you'll probably be hard pressed uh, to not know who this guy is. And the deal is, he pumps out tons of tutorials, tons of content. And it's actually, for him, it's turned into a, a paid membership model where he charges people a monthly fee to come in uh, and get his content. Um, so that's the first thing. It builds your, your name recognition. The second thing it builds is your authority. Uh, there's a guy named Tom McFarlane here. Y'all might have heard of him. Um, Tom blogs prolifically about some technical stuff and then also um, just sort of some thought pieces of what's going on in WordPress. And if you go read an article of Tom's, you don't walk away thinking, I'm not sure if he knows what he's talking about. Uh, there's such authority in there and the way that he's delivering the information um, that his writing has been able to establish uh, great authority. And I actually asked Tom uh, if he thought that that writing had had any impact on his business. And his answer basically was, uh, he doesn't have to do gold calls. The business is coming to him, uh, which is awesome. So we got name recognition, uh, authority, and then the last thing is trust. Uh, people want to do business with people that they trust. Uh, and we got M uh, Michelle Schulp, um, She's a WordCamp Minneapolis organizer and designer, and she's got this uh, great piece of content on her site called The Good Client's Guide, and it's a series of five, six articles that's basically helping educate potential clients on what it's like to work with her, uh, what it's like to work on a, uh, a, a web development project. Um, here's some common words that you might run into uh, in a WordPress world. Basically, she's helping educate them before they've ever spent a dime with her. She's provided some value with this content. And that, <clears throat> trust, that's exactly what it, uh, what it builds. So let's say, let's say you've got all this name recognition, authority, trust, people are banging down your door wanting to do business with you. Okay, the leads 
the leads are flying in. Here's the deal. Not all leads are leads that you want to do business with. Um, <laughs> I'm glad y'all enjoyed that one. I had a fun time searching for that one. Um, not every customer is going to be your perfect customer. Um, I, you know, when you're, when you're poor and somebody says, I'd like to give you some money to do this thing, it's really hard to be picky, right? Um, but there will come a point where being picky actually helps you tremendously. Um, and when I say be picky, I mean you have to define who your ideal lead is. Who is it that you want uh, coming to your website? Um, so answer the questions, who's your ideal customer? Who is it that you want to attract? What kind of person or business do you want to work with? Uh, some questions that you might ask yourself if, you're, if you've never thought who, uh, anything about your ideal lead. Uh, think about, do you enjoy working with nonprofits, or do you enjoy working with small owner-operator businesses? Uh, do you enjoy working with government contracts? Do you enjoy working in education? Kind of narrow down uh, what your niche is that you, <clears throat> excuse me, that you enjoy working with. Uh, this is something I really struggled with because I didn't, when I started writing, I didn't have, I wasn't thinking about ideal leads. I wasn't even thinking about lead generation. I just started writing. I was writing uh, tutorials that basically helped me cement my knowledge. So I'd, I'd learn how to do something and then I'd write a tutorial. Um, and what that did was bring in traffic of other people wanting to know how to make some theme edit or whatnot. Um, so I, I found myself bringing leads to my site, uh, but these leads were DIY people. Uh, they, were, they were not people that were ever going to hire me to uh, do any coding for them, otherwise they wouldn't be on my site looking at my tutorials. Uh, so I inadvertently drew not the right crowd to my website. Um, and now I've been able to, to, to turn that around a little bit and, um, and figure out how I can serve that, uh, that particular audience. But for me, that process was, uh, it, it took a lot of soul searching to figure out who my ideal was. If you're totally lost on that, I highly recommend uh, Book Yourself Solid by Michael Port. It's uh, some great exercises that you can go through to kind of figure that out. So once you, once you define who that ideal lead is, then of course you want to start writing towards that audience. Um, Sorry, that was the awkward part where you don't want to acknowledge the awkward part, but you can't quite get over those. Just I just made a really weird pause. Uh, <laughs> this is why I like email instead of calls. <laughs> Nobody sees when you totally do that. Um, so going back to that, uh, the name recognition, the authority, the trust. Um, I had all these DIY folks coming through my website who were not the, necessarily the people I was trying to attract, but I actually got a client once, and uh, he said, I have no idea what any of your posts mean, uh, but I saw so many people liking it, sharing it, uh, that I knew you must know what you're talking about. <laughs> so I was like, okay, so that, that, that can work. Um, so, we have different audiences, but basically know, know who you serve and then target them. Uh, Rebecca Gill over at Web Savvy Marketing does a fantastic job of this. I don't think I have a little laser on here, but um, down here at the bottom, she's, she's got that's what you would call your user persona. So ideal lead, you could call that your user persona. Um, and she's got website design and development, SEO, and stock WordPress themes. So as soon as somebody lands on her homepage, they can self-select what exactly it is that they need. Um, so notice one thing is just kind of interesting to me. It says website design and development, not WordPress design and development. It doesn't say Genesis development. Um, 
and I think that's, now if your ideal lead is to subcontract for an agency, then being specific about your technology could be great. But for the average person that is a business owner and wants to get their business online, they don't necessarily care what tools you're using to get there. They just want the end result. <clears throat> um, same thing with themes. They're all Genesis themes, but she doesn't mention it there. Uh, so something to keep in mind. All right, another tip. Be yourself when you write. Um, a really, t I'm, a, I'm independent, it's just me, uh, no employees, and it's tempting to want to be on my about page. We uh, provide excellent services. We pride ourselves in high quality, blah, 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 blah. Uh, when in fact, I'm just an I. Um, so don't be afraid to say you're an I, if you're not a we, um, and inject some personality into your uh, content. <clears throat> a couple of examples uh, that I really like uh, from the WordPress world. Uh, this is Curtis. He throws a, uh, Curtis McHale, he throws a custom uh, Lego photo on every single blog post that he writes. And they're always relevant to the topic of the problem. I'm like, how did you even, how did you find that? Lego, or, or whoop, sorry. Uh, yeah, so that's a great example of how he's injecting a little something uh, that he enjoys into his writing style. Um, another one, this is Lindsay Real from uh, Pretty Darn Cute Design. I'm just gonna say, take a stab. If you've never met Lindsay, do you think she's a girly girl? Does this look like somebody that likes bows and peak things? Yes, uh, and I, I, she's, she's a sweetheart. Uh, but her website speaks so much to her personality. Uh, Lastly here, we've got one from MailChimp. How many of you use MailChimp? Wow, everybody. Um, I don't know about you, but I feel rock solid when I queue up an email. I mean, I'm getting the high fives. Uh, if you've ever read some of their knowledge base articles, they've got just a, you know the little monkey that they use. Um, tons of personality there. Excuse me one moment while I take a sip. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> I didn't hear anyone talking amongst themselves. Okay, so be yourself. The next thing is qualify your leads. Jason kind of touched on this earlier that wouldn't it be great if we could all have these wonderfully qualified leads uh, that we're filling out our contact form. It's rarely the case, but we know that you don't want to do business with just anybody and everybody. Just because they land on your site uh, or like your content doesn't necessarily mean that they're a good fit for you. Um, so you can serve your potential clients by helping them <clears throat> uh, qualify themselves. Three ways that you can do this that are pretty straightforward. Uh, the first is you can help your clients qualify themselves based on your offerings. So if I land on Eric Davis's site, which I'm not a designer, but even that, that's, well anyways, I'm not showcasing his design here. Uh, but when, if, when you land on his site, uh, right off the bat, you can see it's obvious that he does e-commerce. And if you dig a little bit uh, deeper, you can see it specifically Shopify. Now, unlike Rebecca Gill, who wasn't focusing on the technology, uh, here's a very specific focus on technology. Um, so it's not to say that one's right or the other, it goes back to who is your ideal lead, who is it that you're trying to attract. Uh, so if I need, I've heard Eric, I've seen his content online, and I'm thinking, I wanna hire that guy. And I go to his website, and I want him to build me a membership site. And I get to his site and I see oh, e-commerce. He's probably not gonna be the right guy to help me do a membership site. So I bounce, I move on. You have saved yourself time by not having someone contact you through your contact form only to have to reply and say, oh yeah, I don't do membership sites. So being clear about what it is that you do and what it is that you provide helps clients know whether or not, or potential clients know whether or not you're a good fit uh, before they ever press the uh, send button to get in touch. 
The next thing you can do to help qualify leads is, uh, is based on their budget. So Crowd Favorite actually does a, a, a great job of this. Um, I don't know if you can even see it, but they have, <clears throat> excuse me, they have a line there that says, what's your budget for the project? And I don't, what is 25K, that's the very lowest number. So if I'm rolling into the Crowd Favorite website and I've got $500 in my pocket, <laughs> I know right away this is not the agency for me. Um, I tried to, I've done tons of, I, I can't even call it as formal as A-B testing, but I've done a lot of experimentation with my contact form. And putting the budget question on there uh, it does a couple things. One, it kind of frames and uh, you, how much it costs to do business with you right up front. Um, and secondly, people who don't have those kind of budgets, you've, it, they've immediately uh, ruled, ruled out uh, you as a potential service provider. And it's a good thing, because even though we like people to pay us money, we don't want to take just anybody's money. <coughs> The last thing you can do to uh, help your clients qualify themselves is based on your availability. Uh, Bill Erickson does a fantastic job of this. He's done this for years, but if you go to his uh, contact page, he's always got when, when uh, his next availability is to take on projects, which if I come to Bill's site and I need this site yesterday, and he's not taking projects until July, then I know Bully Erickson is not going to be the service provider for me. Uh, so you can do your, <clears throat> your potential clients a favor uh, by letting them know that up front. So you're writing tons of amazing content. The leads are flowing in like manna from heaven. I don't know that manna really flows in, but anyways, um, <laughs> the leads are coming, the leads are coming, and what, what next? What do you want them to do? Um, so your website, you, the goal is to convert them, uh, and what a conversion is will look different for everyone. Maybe it's uh, just to fill out a contact form, maybe it's to sign up for your newsletter, maybe it's to click the buy now button. <clears throat> But whatever it is that you want your clients to do, make it easy for them to work with you uh, by making it obvious what they should do, uh, what they should do. So you can lead your leads several ways. Uh, one is with a clear call to action. So this is another example from the Web Savvy site, but um, she's got a little, little text there about uh, Let's create something together and then a blue button that's just say hello and I want to I want to push that button um, Another example uh, Rainmaker they use their call to action up in the uh, actually as part of their navigation uh, Andrea Whitmer over at Nuts and Bolts. Uh, this is on her homepage. She's got the big I'm ready And then even a beloved wordpress.com uh, if you go to their homepage it's a massive, big invitation to create a website. Uh, they don't, your call to actions don't always have to be in the form of these kind of buttons. Um, I use, in, in my post actually, uh, uh, do invite people to download a PDF in exchange for their email address. Um, so it can be right in the middle of your, <coughs> in your content. So the bottom line is you want to make it easy for folks to do business with you. Uh, and when you do that, you and your customers be all like running through fields of flowers to do business together. Um, so with that, on an anticlimactic note, I will say thank you for Camp San Diego. Oh, talk amongst yourselves. I finished early, so I, you now have the gift of five minutes.